Hey, what you just watched was me changing the drum out on a second drum unit here. Uh, it took me about a half an hour, uh, so half the time that the first drum took me. Uh, and to be honest with you, it wasn't really that bad. I mean, I prefer not to have to do this, but if these uh, generic drums last, last just as long as the OEM drum, that's not bad. A half hour of labor to save 200 bucks. Okay, I'm warming up the 3070. Need to print some heavy paper, which I typically do on there, and also some book covers. Um, today I want to go over how to determine what part needs to be replaced on a digital printer. And to figure that out, you really need to know how all the parts work together to put the toner on the paper. And then you basically have to work in reverse uh, to, to narrow down what part needs to be replaced. So what I do first is I gotta figure out, we need to see what is wrong. So I'm gonna go in here, balance adjustment. I can print out a chart in the print mode. And let's just do it on this 1319 text. So just earlier you saw me put a new cyan drum in there and that solved uh, my problem that I was getting a line, a defined line in the cyan. But now the issue that I'm seeing is an uneven in the cyan density. Everything else looks really good, but only cyan, it goes from dark and then right around here looks like there's a bad transfer and it gets lighter so this top edge of the sheet something is causing that toner to be light so that's good news it's only happening in one color so I can rule out the fuser I can rule out the second transfer unit and I can most likely rule out the intermediate transfer belt it could possibly be a roller behind the transfer belt though because there's a different roller for every color so let's just take a look here quick as the paper comes in across here it's not going to be printed until it reaches this roller right here and then from there the top belt here will put toner onto the paper and then it goes through and gets fused so I can rule out these parts because if a fuser was having a problem, if the second transfer or the transfer belt was having a problem, this light cyan would also be a light magenta, light yellow, and light black. It would be affecting all four of the colors. So we know it's something with either the drum, which is highly unlikely because I just put a new one in, it could be a charge wire, also unlikely because those are relatively new and, uh, and typically it looks a little bit different when uh, there's a problem with the charge corona. It's, uh, it's typically uh, more defined lines and not a gradual decline in density. Uh, it could be the developing unit, it could be the developer in the developing unit, it could be something to do with the laser. Uh, and I'm, I'm leaning towards the developing unit or the developer in the developing unit. Uh, those both are beyond their life. I'd expect to get a lot more life out of those, so I'd be interested to know, uh, write down in the comments, uh, anybody that knows the life expectancy of a developing unit or a developer in a 1070, 2070, 30, 80, uh, just, just to, just because I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't, I haven't owned this for that long, so I don't really know. I did notice when I was in here looking, there is a, a definite deep groove in this second transfer roller, but it's not affecting any of the print quality. The image looks just fine. 
Uh, this should actually probably be replaced, but I'm gonna keep it in there for a little bit longer anyways. But uh, I should add that on my list to just get on hand here and replace just as a, a preventative precaution. Now the reality is, is this issue is only going to appear in certain jobs depending on the amount of cyan and the location on the sheet. So I could probably print for another month without changing this just because I have a second machine I can fall back on. So, I mean, if I had heavy cyan coverage on this, I could rotate the sheet 180 degrees so that the cyan would get printed on this side and I could keep running. Or I could just throw it on the 3070 uh, because that looks good and that's professionally serviced. I'm not a professional. So I have 100 books to print. So I wanna see, I'm gonna print one and see if I can actually see that uh, that inconsistency in the cyan. Chances are I won't be able to see it because there's very light color coverage on this job. So let's shoot one out and take a look at it. Okay, so this book is mostly black and white. Although there's a little bit of color. Let's find some color here. Ooh, a 1951 Cadillac. Now, I see very, very little difference from one edge to the other in regards to the cyan. And that's just because it's light coverage and uncoated paper. So I can easily print this and be fine with the quality. Uh, but before I do that, I want to dive in there a little bit deeper and see if I can actually see a physical difference in one of the parts inside the press. Okay, so just in case you didn't know, these are your developing units. And each unit holds a developer. I actually have a developer on hand for when they die, but there's one for each color yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. And what's unique about this is this automatically uh, replenishes the developer through the toner, which is right inside here. And uh, that's different compared to my old machine, the C6500. So there's a laser, laser units behind here that shine a laser in underneath each developer unit. So the yellow laser comes in underneath the unit and it shines through and then shines onto the drums which are stacked on top of each other in the center here that transfer the toner over to the intermediate transfer unit. This belt which transfers the toner down then onto the paper and comes back up, gets cleaned and then goes back down. So let's take this off and see if I can't see anything behind here that is incorrect. Don't forget when you pull this off, you need these two stands so you can stand the intermediate unit by itself. They go right in here. This is the new drum, so that's going to look fine. And down here you can see the charge wire, which again is spotless because it's relatively new. And above it you can see the developer roller and developer. And I want to see if it, if it looks uneven, which it really doesn't. It looks even the whole way across. I would have expected if the developer unit is failing that this section over here would visibly look lighter than this section over here. But it looks pretty good. I'm going to consider the developing unit to be okay. From that I'm inclined to believe that the developer just needs to be replaced. Uh, but I've heard that you might want to replace the developing unit and the developer at the same time uh, because they are both past their life. And sometimes if you put new developer 
like I have right here in an old developing unit, you're gonna potentially wear out that developer prematurely and then have to replace the developer and developing unit in the future. So it might pay off to do both at the same time. Again, anybody with experience with that, please let me know. Uh, I'd love to, to glean some information from everybody out there. One other thought, although I doubt it, is it's possible that this is going to correct itself over time because the new developer enters the developing unit on this side and makes its way across and exits on this side. So there's possible that this section here is just very depleted developer that needs to make its way out and be disposed of, which the machine does on its own. So it's possible that this will even out over time and solve itself, but I wouldn't hold my breath. I don't think this is going to change unless we do something to it. Now, I already ran the uh, density revert, which uh, will increase the density overall in any given color. So if one color density just goes down and it looks really washed out, you can go in here. Uh, it's in the process drum toner density revert, you select the, uh, the color that you want to revert and push start and the machine will automatically pull in new developer and increase the density until it hits the target. I already did that and it didn't make any difference there. It's pretty much the same, I want to say. Um, here I'm definitely seeing a little bit more cyan in this band. So uh, I'm going to leave it as is and uh, run this next job. Uh, it looks just fine for the job that I'm printing. I always have to remember too, my expectations for print quality is more often than not much higher than my customers. So I need to keep that in mind. My customers will be happy with the proof that I printed. Um, they're not going to be looking at it with a loop and studying it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this job. So let me know what I forgot, because there's a lot of stuff to look at in here. And I probably overlooked, you know, a half dozen other possible problems that that uneven density could be coming from. Uh, but that was just where my mind goes. I've had lots of requests to try and figure out how I narrow down the possibilities uh, that could be causing a problem. So I'm going to get this started. Oh, yeah, and always remember there's going to be a wild card. It doesn't matter how long you've been servicing equipment, you've been doing anything. There's a possibility that you're going to have to eat your words at some point and say, well, I had no idea that that would fix the problem, but it fixed the problem. And you just, every day you learn. You never, never quite know it all. man we burned through 16 percent of that yellow drum already i love wearing stuff out Does anybody else get that way okay i got a whole stack printed there here i am the next day i'm still thinking about this thing and i really want to swap two drums even though that cyan drum i put in there uh, is brand new it's still a generic uh, aftermarket part and i don't trust it so I don't want to make decisions that my developer developing unit is bad based on that. And it just doesn't make sense to me that uh, just that side of the developing unit would go bad. So I want to just swap two drums and see what happens. I'm going to do that real quick.
There you have it, folks. It's the drum. So I swapped the cyan and black drum, and the issue indeed jumped to the black. So it, uh, it's bad drum, which shouldn't surprise me. I had low expectations for those aftermarket drums, but uh, now everybody knows. Now you guys know. Don't waste your money on those things. I mean, um, the yellow drum's still going fine, but that cyan drum I just put in there, and unless I actually did something wrong, you know, it's only 3% done, and, uh, and it's no good. Now, when I, I'm gonna open this back up and swap it back to the cyan. I'm gonna see if I can't clean that drum. Maybe there's something on it from the factory. Uh, that I could keep getting a little bit of more mileage out of it, but uh, I mean, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that it didn't last long. Um, so, OEM's the way to go. I still refuse to think this thing is bad because it looks fine, but why am I not getting a transfer here? I did it so you don't have to. You don't have to try out those generic drums. Uh, I'm just curious though uh, what kind of mileage we got. The yellow drum's still running fine. Um, so I'm going to keep running that. The yellow drum is at 16%, 75,000 clicks on that one. The cyan drum, however, I just put in only 14,000 clicks on that, and uh, it's worn out. And we should be getting uh, closer to 400,000 clicks on there, so. It does make me wonder, though, what part of that drum is bad? Because I, I hard to believe that it's the drum surface, uh, but it could be. Maybe a defect from the factory? Uh, is it not accepting charge? Or is it discharging? And not... I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that one. If you know, let me know. I don't know, maybe I'm stubborn, but I still refuse to believe that that drum is bad. I gotta keep trying other stuff. I wanna see if uh, some sort of adjustment I messed up when I put it back together. I know there's there's brackets that hold the drum a certain distance from the developer. And uh, I think if I move that a little bit, it would uh, change the distance and maybe get some more transfer, a toner. There's gotta be something. I gotta keep fiddling with it just a little bit more. Oh man, I think I totally see the problem. This black piece right here holds the developer roller a specific distance away from the drum and I can already tell looking at it that this piece is back just a little bit further than this one so this has to come back I mean a millimeter so let's loosen these screws and just push that back a little bit oh yeah there's a lot of play in that and it was all the way down. And on the other side, it's up pretty much against. That, my friend, is gonna fix the problem. You learn something new every day, don't you? Problem solved, folks. I think I was gonna buy new drums and just throw that out. I still have low expectations for these generic drums and I'm expecting them to fail prematurely, but we'll see how long they go. So, till next time, see ya. Oh yeah, don't forget to like the video.